and take it from here. So the afternoon is um, kind of taking a little bit of a step back from the hospital healthcare specific and, and really looking at kind of the collaborations that these folks have in terms of working on a community-based food system. I think it's really inspirational and, and exciting, so I'm going to pass that off to them. Thank you. Um, so, Um, we have uh, four of the five, six, seven uh, food system council members here today. Um, and what we're sort of hoping to share with you all is just how important each one of us is to each other in our food system work here in Park County. Um, the collaboration that each of us have um, between our agencies and each other's and maybe share some of our success stories. We are very loose. We are a very loose um, council. Um, people have kind of come and gone on and our council. And eventually a magic group. We have a great time together. We all have our hand in local food in some facet within Park County. We all, I think, have a passion for for a sustainable food system within our county. Um, and we all have a role in, in our local food system here in Park County. And I think, you know, when I sat on the Montana Food Systems Council, um, Mark Winnie had presented to our group once upon a time, and he had said to us, um, as a state council, he said, you know, the best thing you can do is go back to your communities and start your own food system council there. And so we already were doing stuff together, um, projects and whatnot. And I came back and I said, hey, you guys, Mark Quinney said we should have a council. Do you guys want to do that? And so we were like, sure, that sounds great. And so that's really, that's why we're so loose. Um, and, and that's what we've done. And we've been kind of working together here and there, probably for the last, at least, five or six years. And you know, again, some of us are new and some of us are older in this council and some have come and some have gone, but, but the whole point is when you guys go back to your communities, if there are some people who maybe mimic the roles that we have or, or have their hands in, in food, food work, food system work at all, can, are you connecting with them and, and could you connect with them and is there a way that you guys could help each other in your own communities make some of these things happen? Um, so I'm kind of hoping we can share that. We're all going to, in I'll introduce everybody, then I'll let them introduce themselves. And what I think the two things that we are going to try and focus on today is, you know, what role do we have in the food system council here in Park County, and why do we find it so important? And we do have about 30 minutes to do that, so it's, we're going to be a, a bit short and sweet. But don't forget, Michael and I are, are both hosting um, tours after this, and I think hopefully Craig and, and not Marianne, actually. Craig, Craig, the um, county sanitarian, is going to come with. So there will be plenty of time for questions in addition at that tour as well. Okay, so again, this is Craig Case. He is the Park County Sanitarian. You've got Michael McCormick. He is the executive director of the Park County Food Pantry. And New is the Livingston Resource Center, Food Resource Center. And then Marianne Keyes works for MSU Extension. The two people who are on your agenda who did not make it today is John Polachek, who is the School Food Service Director, and then Todd Wester, who is the Curriculum Director for the schools. So, unfortunately, the school people are probably at school, um, unfortunately, but they play a pretty big role. So if you think about all the institutions in town, we, we all sit on this, this council. Okay, do you want to start here? Sure. I like kind of like Jesse said, my name's Craig Case and I'm um, a Park County Sanitarian or Health Department or Environmental Health Department. And uh, we also contract for services to do Sweetgrass County too, and I really enjoyed going over to Big Timber if anybody over that country. Um, so my role on the council or my role for the county is um, basically to serve you all. Um, I would say farmers and ranchers were here first. And then somewhere along came the inspector or sanitarian, you know, who invited that guy, right? Well, we live in a world where that exists, so we have to deal with it. And nobody here wants to ever have unsafe food or, you know, those types of things happen. So it's something we all have to deal with. 
But my role that I see is, again, like I said, to serve, because I remind my friends in other counties who are sanitarians, every penny that I earn, or my salary, comes from all of your tax dollars, and comes from your license fees, and from nowhere else. And so I have a responsibility to serve you. So every time I get questions come my way, I want to be able to say yes, yes, you can do that, or yes, that sounds great, unless I can't, and then we find hopefully a solution to that. So that's kind of my role in the council, just to see everybody be successful with what they want to do, if we can get there. So. And we love our sanitarians. <laughs> And there was a question earlier about the role of the sanitarium. And I think in Livingston and Park County, the council that we formed and so many of the activities that we pursue as a group and individually involve Craig. I know I've had Craig involved in the development of our new food resource center and community kitchen since it was just a, a drawing on the back of a napkin. And so he's had direct and, and regular input and review of the process all along. And when I run into people who, when, when you say county sanitarian, they kind of you know, get defensive, like, you know, when is that bad guy going to show up? In our case, he is a real asset and a part of the team. He's, he's part of the solution. So that's the first thing I would encourage everybody to do. If you don't have a good working relationship, go home and, and make one. Uh, the question I get sometimes is, why is a food pantry engaged the way we are and participating on the local food system council? We're a data-driven little food pantry, and I can tell you that the reason we're involved is that in a typical month, we are helping to feed 8, 9, 10 percent of the population of Livingston. We're distributing over 200,000 pounds of food in a 12-month period. So, you know what? That makes us a significant player in the local food system, like it or not. We're helping feed people. And many of the people that we're helping to feed are in need of many other services and come into the food pantry suffering from all sorts of, of issues, uh, health issues and what have you. And it is our mission that we have taken on to help them address those issues. Um, I've become, a, well, I'm new to the nonprofit world. After 35 years in business trying to make a profit, um, which I did sometimes, um, the, the whole nonprofit concept was sort of an alien idea to me. You know, I, went, I wasn't quick to embrace it, uh, this whole public assistance thing. But I'll tell you what, the past five years being associated with food pantries has been the most remarkable experience of my life. And if I was still managing a company, a company, I'd have every senior executive take six months off and go work in a food pantry because it changes your perspective. So what we're after in, in the Livingston Food Pantry is not just feeding people in need, it's finding out why they have that need. We're, we're all about root causes. I told somebody recently that I don't want to keep raising money to buy band-aids. I want to raise money to develop the vaccine. Mm -hmm. We want to put a stop to this. The tour that you're going to get this afternoon will show you a resource that we have created to help address root causes. We know, for instance, that 80% of the people who come into the Livingston Food Pantry are there because of employment challenges. They're underemployed or unemployed and looking for work. 20% of the population we serve are typically elderly, disabled, um, and, and we're always going to need to help those people. The other 80%, I want to put the, I want to see them go to work, have meaningful career jobs that they can live on and support families. Um, so we work hand in hand with everybody here at the table and, and anybody we can, we, can, we can find to help build a strong food system um, in, this, in this county. Um, 
we spend a lot of money on food acquisition. Why should I be spending it with the USDA where you know, the money goes to Washington or someplace, or with Albertsons? Um, I want to buy from local farmers. I want to grow some of our own food for processing and distribution in the food pantry to people in need. When we have local foods in there, and one of the collaborations that we do between the pantry and the school system, for instance, is that they make fresh, wonderful fresh soups over there for their soup and salad bar at the high school. But frequently, they'll have soups left over. I hope you're okay with this. <laughs> and, and what I do, I'll go out and buy those real tight lid, you know, those deli containers like you get. And I give them to the high school, and when they have soup left over, they fill all those cups up, put the lid back on them, put them in their freezer, freeze them, I go get them, we bring them over to the pantry and distribute them to people coming through the pantry. So that soup doesn't go to waste like it used to. It used to go down the drain. Bless you. And that, I think, is a, is a good example of the kind of collaboration and community service that can come out of a, a group like, like we've formed here. So I hope you all come on the tour and we'll talk about this more. Like Jesse said, I am Mary Ann Keys with MSU Extension. Can the folks in the back hear me if I talk that fast? Okay. Um, what I bring to the team is that educational component. I am kind of a jack of all trades if you've ever worked with Extension. Uh, so right now I want to preface it that if you feel the need to stand up while I'm talking or while the rest of us talk, we're fine with that. It's called adult education. The mind can absorb what the butt can endure, so if you need to get up and move, we're fine. That's what I bring to the team. I partner with each one of these folks to teach concepts about local food. Uh, Michael and I specifically are teaching children how to cook. And you might think, what does that have to do with local food? The majority of our local food here in Livingston is raw product. If they can't cut up the squash, they don't use it. So we're taking those kids, we're taking that raw product, and we're giving them the potential to understand how to use the knives, read that recipe, and go ahead and cut it up. And that's just one example. It's all about learning by doing, and you can do the same thing with adults. Um, and so that's what we like to, to do, to promote and to push. Um, the other thing Extension brings, and I, how many of you work with your Extension offices? A few. Okay, so we're like the redheaded stepchild of the university. No offense. We are not located on the campus of MSU. We are in every county across the state, and there's at least one of us in every county. We provide the technical content that you need to put research into practice. So if we have folks that are really keen on local food production, but want to learn how to can because they don't know how to extend that growing season, I teach those classes. We have folks that want to do a backyard garden, but you have a pH of 7.8, which most of you know is pretty high. Um, we have an agricultural extension agent who can help you decide what plants you can grow. The best thing about us is that we're free or very low cost services. So if you need to direct people to places where they can get basic information about gardening, about composting, about food preservation, that's us. And the best thing is, we're the best use of your taxpayer dollars. You could be funding Craig, or you could be funding me. <laughs> <laughs> I only say that. Craig and I teach Thursday classes together, and I like to pick on him as a regulatory authority. Um, but all jokes aside, if you have to do serve safe in your county, I would highly advise you to have a san sanitarian there. Um, that is the safe environment that we talk about food safety and what happens and what you can do to make it better. And the more you can make your sanitarian a safe reference as opposed to the authority, the more likely people are to go to him. And so I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed in our classes that we get some pretty off the wall questions about things that people probably shouldn't be doing. Um, but they feel safe enough to ask. And so that's where at least I've achieved my goal, because we know that some of our establishments don't have a three compartment sink, or they don't have a hand wash sink, or they're buying from a source that's not necessarily approved, but they're sliding it through the door. When they feel comfortable enough to ask the sanitarian, all of a sudden you've opened that gate to information transfer, to knowledge increase, and to a safer food system. 
And so anything that you can do to make them more safe and more friendly, Craig's pretty friendly himself, but we like to promote. So that's me on my soapbox. Thank you. Marian also um, taught knife skills class to my staff. They didn't have to listen to me talk. She taught a chopped class, a cooking with herbs class. What classes did you teach for my staff? Yeah, so use your extension agent, they are awesome. Um, and I don't know how we're doing on time. A couple more minutes? Okay, so maybe the last thing I'll wrap up with is the food festival, just a success. You want some food festival? Do that, and I'd like to add two things. You got it. So I'm going to just tell you one of the successes that this council has had. Um, we put on a, what we call the Yellowstone Food Festival, and that was two years ago, now? Two years ago. And so how that, just the way that this rolled out, we have a, um, we have some pretty affluent folks in the valley, and there's a philanthropist who um, has an employee who, who goes around and says, hey, I really like what you're doing. Is there anything we can give you money for? And this, this woman knocked on my door and said, we love what you're doing. Is there anything we can give you money for? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I don't know what it is yet, but yes, there is something you can give us money for. So she gave us about $3,000 and I called my buddies on the Food Systems Council. And I said, hey, you guys, here's $3,000. What should we do with this? And I had gone to the Beartooth um, Forum down at Red Lodge and spoke about you know, what we're doing at Livingston. And I thought, that is just the coolest group of people in Red Lodge has really got it going on. I said, I want to do that in, in Livingston. And I had gone to um, uh, Friends of Local Foods in Billings. They had a food council group. This is several years ago. And I was like, I want, we need to do that in Livingston. So we had this $3,000 chunk of change to do something with. So we all kind of collectively came together and we had maybe, maybe a year, maybe 10 months to put this food, Yellowstone Food Festival together. And we partnered with MSU and had some MSU people come over. Um, we had, I'm sure we had some vistas at the time, food core vistas. And we put on this really cool event um, in Livingston all around local food. Um, we invited Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. We had somebody there who was serving bear stew. Um, we had a, a local food cook-off where you had to, per, you had to, people could enter their crock pot dish and it had to be 50%, had to be local. Uh, source within 50 miles. We had Ace Hardware there showing all their canning goods. Um, we had a guy singing pretty much the whole time with a guitar and a microphone. Um, and it was just this really successful event and we raised an additional $3,000 for the Farm School program in Livingston. So that was just one, one of a few successes I think this group has had. And so again, if you have the opportunity to do something with a, a group of people who are like-minded in your community, definitely. Definitely give it a good go. Okay, Michael wants to finish up. Two things. One, if in your communities you're not engaging your local food pantries, and I'm assuming most of your communities have a food pantry, go introduce yourself. Get them involved. Get them engaged in the food system in your communities. Because, known or not, they're probably playing a very important role in helping feed citizens of your, of your town. Um, the other thing, the, one of the other resources that I think all of us up here uh, take a, a great advantage of is the uh, MSU internship program. And um, it's the greatest thing since canned beer. So if you're not working <laughs> with Allison and Colleen, where's Colleen? There she is. They'll, they'll send you some of the smartest people you've ever met. And they're energetic and full of great ideas, and it's a wonderful resource that all of us should be using. And uh, we've made great use of it at the Livingston Food Pantry. They've been a huge help. Um, you know, and we're here to talk about farm to hospital. And I think in everything we've talked about up here, all the collaboration that we've created in, in Livingston and Park County, kind of rolls up into support for our hospital, support for Jesse, working with our local farmers, making sure that we have viable economics uh, processes set up so that the farmers can afford to sell to Jesse. We're now creating this food processing kitchen that you're going to tour later, 
so that if Jesse says for the hospital she wants carrots sliced one inch thick and frozen in five pound bags, that's what you'll get. So we're creating this, this loop, if you will, of collaboration where everybody is going to support the next person in line. So I think that's collectively kind of our uh, recommendation to everybody. And, and get your sanitarium involved. Yeah, big deal. Thank you.